Hello and welcome to Just Food for Dogs headquarters. My name is Dr. Oscar Chavez. I'm the Chief Medical Officer for Just Food for Dogs and I'm joined by some of our veterinary team here, some experts, um, and we're here to answer some questions that you might have about uh, co coronavirus and COVID-19 and how it relates to our pets. We are happy to uh, answer the questions that, with the information that we have so far. I just want to introduce everybody real quick. So this is Dr. Jessica Wilson. Hello everyone. I am your veterinary outreach trainer here at Just Free for Dogs. We also have Dr. Kendra Scheibe. Hi there. I'm our West Coast Regional Medical Director. And we have board certified veterinary toxicologist, Dr. John Texas. Hi there, everyone. I am a specialist in toxicology, which focuses on safety and quality. And we see ourselves as more than just a retail kitchen or a dog food store. We see ourselves as uh, partners in your pet's health. And for that reason, we take it seriously um, and also have a responsibility to uh, address your questions and and uh, hopefully shed some light on some of this uh, coronavirus stuff um, and uh, at times um, de deliver some truth as far as we know it and then um, also some opinion as to what uh, we think might be the best practice going forward. So I think with that, uh, we will look at some of the questions that you have submitted and uh, start addressing them. So far, there's no evidence that uh, a dog or a cat can carry this particular coronavirus um, and become infected with it. There was a dog that tested a weak positive in Hong Kong, but it's not thought to have actually been carrying the virus. It is not something that infects animal species. It's not going to affect your dog at all. The concern that we have right now with limited information is what Dr. Chavez was talking about in the sense that it could contaminate your dog's fur. So a person who might be, who might be suffering from COVID-19 might shed virus onto your dog by petting it, and then that could introduce it into your house. And so we're just recommending social distancing even with your pets. Keep them away from other people. Don't let people snuggle up to them, particularly if people have been sick in the past month or so. We are committed to keeping our locations open as long as we are allowed to do so. Uh, the idea there is that we are uh, an extension of the healthcare community in the sense that uh, we are partners in your pet's health. So a um, guidance went out to veterinarians uh, via the AVMA, the American Veterinary Medical Association, um, encouraging them to stay open uh, because again, as healthcare professionals, we have to be able to provide our service. And so we see ourselves as an extension of that and uh, food is a indispensable item. And so as long as we can stay open, we will be open. If you're like me, you're wondering what to do with your dog during this time. Um, my dog, Hank, is incredibly energetic, uh, a lot to handle being cooped up indoors right now. Um, and a lot of people are asking us, how do we feel about taking our dogs out on walks? And I think it all depends on the environment that you live in. Um, if you have access to kind of some open spaces where they're not uh, heavily populated regions, not high traffic areas, I think it is perfectly acceptable to take your dogs on walks. Use your own leashes, all of their own equipment and things that they're used to being handled with and keep your distance. Social distancing is key. And you know, you want to avoid high traffic areas like dog parks, unfortunately, where your dog might mingle with other pet parents or other dogs, um, and just keep it to a place where you can be um, more separate. Unfortunately, if you're in an apartment type situation, you might need to get out of that environment and go to a place where you can have a little bit more space between you and other people in the community. So a lot of the questions that we have been receiving have been along the lines of, well, what can I do with my dog if I am stuck at home? So there are lots of options. You can 
post a yappy hour on social media, right? Maybe get some friends and family together since we have the beauty of technology. And then maybe you can still have kind of a social with no contact kind of get together where you can still include your dog. Other things to think about are what kind of games can you come up with? Maybe you can teach your dog a new trick at this point, right? Hide and seek. You can use food as a great motivator. Um, if you happen to have a small outdoor space or a small yard, that would be great to give them a little exercise. Now, if you are an apartment dweller, then you're going to have to get a little bit creative, but use your local network as a resource, whether it's your friends and family, um, maybe calling, maybe your veterinary clinic could have some input on what kind of ideas for enrichment you can provide for your pet so that we can all get through this together. Well, I hope that we've been able to answer a few questions. I think you guys had some great questions. We always love the interactions we have with our customers because uh, without you, we wouldn't be able to fulfill our mission, which is to increase the quality and length of life for as many pets as possible through a proven, balanced, whole food diet. Uh, we have some initial research to show that that has an impact on the immune system. Uh, we are doing more research uh, in the scientific literature uh, to support uh, that and other uh, benefits of eating minimally processed real food. And in addition to that, there are benefits to uh, taking certain supplements. And I think uh, this panel, uh, the folks around us um, can talk a little bit more about that as well. Hey guys, so these are very stressful times. And as you guys know, your pets can absolutely pick up on your stress. And there are some easy things to try and do at home that can help alleviate this. So one, having a plan and staying calm ourselves can be very helpful for our pets as they sense our energy, right? Number two, a natural calming supplement like our Just Food for Dogs Calm may be very beneficial for your dog and helping kind of take the edge off as we get through this. So just make sure, stay prepared, have a plan, use Calm if you need to for your pup. I know I'm probably gonna end up taking something very similar to help keep my stress at bay. So we're here for you to any way that we can help. I'm all about natural products for myself. And one thing that I have found helpful over the years is kind of a natural immune boosting from olive leaf products. Um, I feel very strongly for it for my pets as well. And Just Food for Dogs Skin and Allergy Care can kind of provide that extra supplementation to help boost the immune system in times of need. We're living in a new norm all of a sudden and dogs need structure. They love to have a routine. And with many of us working from home now, our dogs notice that disruption. And so I really encourage you to get into a routine as quickly as you can. Take your dog on regular walks just to different environments than maybe they're used to, but continue to do things at the similar time every day. And, uh, and again, let's just take care of one another and get through this together. what we are advocating is a two plus two equals four. What we mean by that is two weeks of frozen food plus two weeks of our pantry fresh shelf stable product uh, that can be in your cupboard. Two weeks of food is probably very easily storable in your freezer. And if you do that, you should have about four weeks supply of food because let's be honest, we don't know how long this is gonna go, uh, but all indications show that we're looking at at least a few weeks. And um, if you follow the two plus two equals four, uh, you should be in pretty good shape. And that's available right now at all of our locations.